plans and activities. Hello, I'm Information Officer for the Ministry of Communications and Works, Natasha Letsom, coming to you live from the Terence B. Letsom International Airport, where today we will be witnessing, as you see our airplane is coming in, so we're at the airport. We're witnessing today with the fire officers here at the Terence B. Letsom International Airport will be simulating an event for us where they're going to be using their pressurized fire rig to simulate some training so we could see them in action. We'll actually be having one of the official come shortly and light the rig and we'll be seeing a response from the firemen and while the response is going on one of the officials the chief or the deputy they will be talking to us in terms of what we're seeing and how the fire officers will be utilizing the rig and following that we'll have an interview by the chief to to establish how they came by the rig and you know talk about the rig and tell us what benefit it will be for the fire officers and the BVI Airports Authority. We're here with the deputy, Mr. Larry George. Mr. George, tell us exactly what are we seeing right now. Well, what you're looking at right now is the officers have made their initial attack. Right now, they're shielding under the branches by opening the branches or white cone before they actually stream it down and go into a firefighting mode. Now, what you're looking at, they're actually into a firefighting mode right now. But initially, as, as time goes by and they get tired of fatigue, they would actually use that same branch as a shielding mechanism by opening a wide spray and actually sheltering under that. So we're actually looking right now as the actual firefight. And there you go, that officer just opened his branch just for initial break. There we have that wide screen actually operating as a shielding mechanism for the officers. Shielding behind that uh, wide spray. And we're noticing that no matter what they're doing, it's not out in. Is that by design or what, what is that? Yeah, actually we control the actual um, shut off flame from the actual um, system itself. But initially they can out it if they actually apply a large amount of um, water or chemical that we use on the screen. They can actually extinguish that. But it's normally controlled by what we do at the, at the valve. There you have it. It's, it's designed right now as to give us, I would say, uh, waste. And bear in mind, we're still in the actual testing phase of this uh, system. But I think we actually did enough testing to actually introduce it to the media this, at this time. So what we have is we're going to be going through this testing phase for a period of time until we, you know, we're satisfied with the initial operation, getting our procedures together in order to, to maximize the benefit of it and then we'll keep building on that as we go along. You're looking at some of the members from the board of the airports authority who have come out today to witness the training as this is the first time some of them would be have would have been exposed to, to the rig and the, the drill that the officers did today. So they're here now discussing I guess their thoughts regarding the training exercise that just took place. We're here with the chief fire officer, Mr. Anthony Lewis. Mr. Lewis, tell us what we've just witnessed here today. What you have just witnessed is our 
new um, screen, fire screen, which is pressurized. Um, it's part of our training me um, mechanism that we're going to be using now, rather than just have a fire pit with, with oil just burning. And this is the type of training that we would, the, our guys would have to come up against when they go to England to do the basic training. So what we are trying to do here is to simulate the, the whole thing of the fire service. As you know, with aircraft, all aircraft are pressurized and all the fuel and the, the hydraulic fuel and so on, everything is pressurized so that when there is a fire, all of that just comes into one big flame and it's very hard to get out. What we have just installed is a, a pressure-fed supply system that will continue to burn and give the guys good practice for firefighting. And what do you hope to achieve from this rig? Well, not only that this rig is going to help the guys to be more sharper, but we're looking at the future. In the future, we want to also put down another section. This is just the first phase. We will have a, a, a fuselage pressurized the same way. And when we have got and extend our, our, our whole um, training ground, as you can see, we are limited with space here. But what we're looking at in the future is that we might be able to train the other islands right, close by, like Mount Strat and Antigua, they could come here and probably do their, their recurrent training, not their basic training, and, and they'll be, be qualified to do so. And where did you now get the idea of building this pressure rig? What's the history behind of this? Well, the history behind the pressure rig is, is basically twofold. One, when the guys who go to England for training, this is what they train against. That's one of the first things they learn to do, to fight fire, pressurize. And secondly, we, we thought that this would be the first one in, in the Caribbean like this. And so that we could extract or invite other close by islands to come and do the training here. Your deputy was telling me of some of the techniques you were hoping to teach your officers. One of them was the branch technique. Could you further elaborate on that? Yeah, the branch, branch handling is one of the first things you learn as a firefighter. Because once a fire is going, the fire officers and the firefighters on that branch must know how to maneuver that branch into protecting themselves and at the same time putting out the fire. So you have a wide cone area that would protect you and then you move in and have a, put on a, a straight stream. Right, so the branch handling with the hose under pressure give the, the firefighters now a better chance to really, you know, understand themselves when they're up against. And you can have feel the heat today, right? Yes, right. And um, I noticed that when the appliance came in, the first thing that they did was to use the hose on top of the vehicle. Uh, why did they do that? And how is that um, within the grand scheme of things of how you guys go about out in a fire? Well, on the airport, you know, we are quick response. We have to reach to that, that scene or that incident three minutes not exceeding two. So one of the first attack is our main um, turret on the top of the, of, of the, the appliance. You just press a button and all the foam and media will come out at the same time. That is for quick response and that would knock the fire down in seconds. Out, and then after that whatever fire is left they will pull the hose reel and, uh, or the hand lines and they will map up areas that the branch wasn't able to, to, to um, distinguish, extinguish. I also noticed that you had some of the members of your board here today. What was their role in being here and what are some of the conclusions that they came up following the exercise? Well, they, they, they understand now what the fire um, officers do at the fire station and why we're here. And why when we ask for funds for certain things that, <laughs> that we, we get it. And they really did get the message today because not only did they see the heat, but they saw the firefighters in action. And, and, and no, they gone back with the impression now that yes, we have a safe airport with our firefighters. Well, thank you very much for this interview, Mr. Lewis. You're welcome, Natasha. I'm here with the fire officers who have just taken part in that simulated event with the fire screen. And just to give you an opportunity to see some of the faces that just gave us that nice demonstration here at the BVI Airport Authority. We just gave a pan of the fire officers here today. Very good job indeed. I'm Information Officer for the Ministry of Communications and Works, Natasha Letson, saying thank you for joining us. Please see us again next time. This broadcast was brought to you by the Department of Information and Public Relations and this station.